All right, I've been waiting to do this video for a couple reasons. One, haven't had the time. Two, I need to decompress after the emotional day, the long, tired, draining two days that I had between Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, the aftermath that we've all been dealing with, what we've been watching, what they've been showing. With all of that, I've waited, and I'm gonna do this video. I'm going to explain everything from that day. I uh, got to DC at seven in the morning, and I was on the train <clears throat> to the suburbs in Virginia at 3.30. So between seven and 3.30, I'm gonna go through what happened, what I saw, all that. So a little bit of a backstory. I got up at eight o'clock Tuesday morning. Uh, I planned on going to sleep early Tuesday evening after dinner time and leaving at two in the morning. Well, <laughs> I didn't sleep. I slept an hour maybe at 8 o'clock and then 45 minutes at around 12 o'clock. And I woke up at 1 at one o'clock. I woke up. I said, that's it. I said, I can't. I was too excited. So I got ready. My friend came at 1.30 and we left around 2. 2 o'clock, took a four-hour drive up to the suburbs of Virginia, Virginia. Picked up another friend of mine. We went to the train station, took the train in, arrived around 7 o'clock. When we got off the train, we were started walking from the train to the Ellipse Monument, the Washington Monument Ellipse area, where President Trump was supposed to be speaking, where the event was going to be. When we first started walking, we realized every store, front, every business was boarded up completely boarded up, closed, nothing open. Like, what are they expecting here? So then we start walking, we get to where we're at, and the people that were there at seven o'clock in the morning, President Trump wasn't speaking until 11. The official event didn't start until nine. There was easily close, hmm, a little over half a million people everywhere everywhere you could see those people so we get there and uh first thing you realize <laughs> in an event like this with the amount of people you kind of tend to notice porta potties or the lack thereof one of the first things i noticed the entire b street Constitution Avenue, which splits from where the Ellipse is and the Washington Monument. That whole, it was filled with people. I mean, you couldn't move. You really had to like, excuse me, excuse me, while you're bumping through people. You know, you say you're, you say excuse me, but <laughs> you're not asking them to move. You're just basically saying sorry, I'm bumping through you. Most of those people were waiting for the bathrooms. That D.C. mayor had about eight porta potties. Ten maybe in the street. Not only was there only eight porta potties to twelve maybe, but they were at the point near the entrance to the ellipse. So they were only letting a certain amount of people, like thirty five thousand, into the ellipse area where Trump was actually where the stage was. Right near that entrance was where the porta potties were. Anybody that's ever been to a large event before, whether it's a concert, a sporting event, uh, protest, whatever, that's organized to this extent, knows that there's usually a fair amount of preparation that goes into this, and that's not usually what happens. They don't clog an area like that. It was just weird, and I noticed it at first. So, when the event starts, it's great. The energy, the amount of people, the energy. Like I said, when I was walking through, bumping into people, usually when you're in that confined space, 
that early in the morning, most people are probably extremely tired. Usually you get some people like, come on, like getting frustrated. Nothing. Happy. Joyous. It, it was a party. It was a party. Um, I'm trying to get my thoughts here. So as Trump starts speaking, everybody, it's kind of spread out. Everybody starts coming into the same, you know, closer together to see the screens. There were two big screens as you got further away from the stage. I thought I was impressed before. I'm going to post most of the pictures and videos I had of that day after I share this video. But again, I was in awe. I realized at that moment that I was in a moment. A moment in time. It's even pretty hard to describe now. I haven't done that great of a job explaining it right now because it's very hard. It's very hard to put into words how that felt. And the emotions that people had through everything, not just the election. The election was a piece of it. But decades. I'll get to that later. So President Trump speaks. And at 1 o'clock, there was a planned protest meeting, gathering, planned for the Capitol. Okay. We had heard people telling, you know, hey, there's going to be something at 1 o'clock. Don't forget throughout the day. So, right, you know, around the time that he usually ends his speeches, we start seeing people clear out. So we're like, all right, we should go now before we get caught in a logjam. So we start walking straight down Constitution B Street to the Capitol. By the time we got to the Department of Justice, it was getting insane. And by what I say insane... It wasn't getting rowdy. There was just so many people on this street walking together. And there were people outside of the Department of Justice. A lot of people. All the way up to where they had it barricaded. And there were people there that weren't happy. The Department of Justice isn't the most clean government agency. <laughs> clean government agency. <laughs> That's a funny one. Anyway, I said to my friends, I said, wow, people are upset here? People fired up here? So we continued to walk. We got to the Capitol, and we were pretty close. I mean, we were one of the first you know, groups to get there from the Washington Monument. And we already started commenting to each other like, this is a lot of people. We're going to be heard today. And within five minutes, mind you, nothing was happening other than, you know, a gathering. People chanting, USA, you know, stop the steal, all that stuff. It was just, you know, it wasn't even angry. It was just very emotional, loud, lots of people. Within five minutes, the D.C. Capitol Police were shooting off tear gas and flashbangs. There was nothing happening. There was... And I immediately looked at my... I said, what is happening? Why are they shooting this stuff? Are they trying to incite us? So after about... I don't know, short amount of time. We heard somebody, <laughs> I'm going to post a picture of who it was. This ought to make a lot of people real happy. <laughs> anyway, we saw somebody telling us that the main event was supposed to be in the back of the Capitol. Okay? So we walk around the back of the Capitol, and that's where, that's where it really started to hit us, about how many people were there, what we were witnessing started at the bottom and then they started to make their way up and about three or so Capitol Police tried to say you can't I mean thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people all you could see 
I mean, the pictures and videos I show aren't going to do it any justice whatsoever. You, you can never tell. You would need an aerial picture. They're never going to show you that. But you would need an aerial picture to even get any idea of what we were standing in and what we were witnessing. So they get up to the front, right near the door, I guess, the top of the steps going into the back of the Capitol, and they started flashbanging again. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me rewind, I'm sorry. When we went around to the back, I saw an officer standing, I guess, midway on the side. So I walked up to him. I'm like, why are they doing that? Why are they shooting these flashbangs and tear gas? Which I got to feel for the first time in my life. And I wasn't sprayed. I just got the some of the cloud. For nothing, for standing there. God forbid what the people that actually got sprayed with it for. So I asked him, I said, what are they doing this for? He said, because they were throwing, shooting stuff off at us first. I was like, what? I said, I was standing there. No, they didn't. He's like, yeah. I said, who told you? He said, they told us. I'm pointing to his ear. Who? Who was in his ear telling him that? Was it one of his fellow officers? Was it somebody else? I don't know. All I know is that officer told me that they were told in their ear that people were shooting stuff off at the police, which was not happening. And then they shot stuff off at us. They were walking up. They were getting close to people that were just, there was this ledge and they were climbing up on it. Not doing anything. I mean, whether they were allowed to be on the ledge or not, I don't know. But they, with their guns pointing at them, whether they were rubber bullets or real guns or, you know, pepper spray or cannons I don't know but they were pointing their weapons at these people and I'm like what so I figured out finally why how legit that was probably never find out so back to back of the capital it was really a, an incredible scene that's all I can put it as it was not violent there was I saw no Zero. Not one bit of violence. Unless you count people banging on the door, the back door of the Capitol, that is the extent of violence that I saw the entire day. From 7 in the morning until 3.30 when we left. None. None. And they let us up there. You know, they. I guess the officers there, why there was like four there, I don't know. And there are also three or four, there's a picture I have that shows it, but there's like three or four standing on this ledge. I don't, it was on the side. I don't understand what they were doing there. Maybe they were, <laughs> no one was going to do anything to them in the crowd. They could have easily went back in. Anyway. Um, so yeah, it was an incredible scene. All of us there felt it. Uh, I tried to explain it to my wife, friends of mine, I'll never be able to. The four years that we've gone through being harassed and told we were bad and all of that, everything that we have gone through, especially as Trump supporters, as Republicans, all of the things that have happened in our country for the last 70 years, Ever since a communist influence has heavily become heavily prevalent in our society, whether people want to admit that or not, it has. From education into our government, everything. I don't know what is not influenced by the Chinese Communist Party at this point. And that's not just me saying that to stir something up. I mean, you can find out. Just look it up. So, with those feelings, it was just incredible. And then at around 3.30, I looked at my friends and I was like, well, this is about the end of what we can witness today. What I'd be willing to witness. I just got something in me that said, we should just leave. I got a four-hour drive home. I had to drop my friend off. 
So it's either stay and see how far this goes or go home. We got to experience what we experienced. We were proud to be there. So we decided, let's go. Let's get out. So we walk around the side and we start walking on Constitution. Thousands upon thousands of people are still walking towards the Capitol at this point. Um, there were some leaving with us, but there was still a ton of people. Uh, there had to be a million and a million and a half people there for the whole day from, you know, at the max. I've been to the, I was at a Phillies parade when the Phillies won the World Series in 2008. I would be willing to bet there was more people in Washington, D.C. at the state, at the U.S. Capitol, between the U.S. Capitol and the Washington Monument area than that Phillies parade. I've never seen that in my life. So we decide to leave. We get back on the train. Well, as we're leaving, as we're walking down Constitution, my phone finally gets service. Bing, 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 bing. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you leaving safe? My wife, you need to get to the train. I'm like, what? They're rioting. They're breaking into the cab. What are you talking about? No, I said it's perfectly fine. I haven't seen one person do anything that could have even got them arrested. I said, what, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I thought it was just the regular media spin, what the media likes to do. So, I just left. And we're walking to the train. We get on the train and we start talking to a lot of people who were like us. And it was a really fitting ending to the day to go in with people, spend the day with people, and leave with people. They were good people. Good people. They were just frustrated. They wanted to support their president. They loved this country. They wanted to exercise their constitutional rights, as they should. And that's that. Before I go any further and talk about what has happened since I walked away from that capital. I would just like to make it clear that some of those actions inside that capital by the people that got inside shouldn't have happened. I didn't partake. And if there was a million and a half people there, would they show with the most 50 That doesn't represent the day. But those actions were irresponsible. Um, they were illegal. The theft, the back and forth with the police, which I'd like to add before I go any further, that there are videos that show just as many people stopping people from breaking windows from doing things they shouldn't be doing just as many people stopping those people as it shows them doing it inside the capitol but that's the only thing you're going to see the same 10 or so 20 second clips 10 different 20 second clips that's all they're going to start showing over and over and over again on repeat and at this point they're not they're not going after those people. They're not. When we were in the back of that Capitol, and I had that feeling, I had a feeling that, wow, this might make the media, this might make these politicians, these cowards, rethink what's happening here. This is a great event. This might do it. And somehow they've managed to double down. Now they're coming after people like me. How are they coming after people like you, Rick? Well, look at the media coverage. Look at what these politicians are saying. I saw Josh Stein. He's in North Carolina something or other. I don't even know his position. 
saying that if you know anybody that went to the Capitol from North Carolina, let me know. They will be prosecuted. I was there, Josh. I was there. My name is Rick Walker, and I will meet with you and anybody that you think should arrest me because I was there. What does that mean? I didn't do anything illegal. I didn't go into the Capitol. I didn't steal anything. I didn't assault anybody. I did nothing. But these bastards just want to spread fear. They want to spread hate. Anything to hold on to their power. Anything to destroy somebody that doesn't, doesn't think the same way. Anybody that doesn't kiss the ring. Anybody that doesn't bend the knee. You don't bend the knee, you're going to go down to your knees. I'll go down to my knees to pray. That's about it, Mr. Stein. Roy Cooper. Chuck Schumer. Sleepy Joe. You and all your media clowns aren't going to gaslight me. And I'm going to do everything I can. Everything I possibly can. I'm going to keep spreading this information. I'm going to keep letting people know this is not what happened. If you were there, if you were the one of the million and so people that were there, other than the little tiny group that got inside, if you were any of those people, please don't stop. Please don't let them gaslight you. If you weren't there, please use some common sense. Please think about the people that you know were there. I'm going to end it. Um, please use some common sense. Please know, I know Rick. I know Reese. I know so-and-so. That's not who they are. That's not what they do. That's not what all of their videos and pictures show. It is not what they're telling you. And then you start to think, how did it happen? Okay, how did those people get into the Capitol? Like I told you before, with them shooting flashbangs and pepper spray or tear gas, being told that we were doing it? Unless that officer made it up, somebody was trying to incite them to incite us. I'm not blaming it on those police officers. I, I can't imagine the trepidation they felt looking out at what they were looking out at. No, not that it was violent, not any of that, but just knowing like, dear God, if something goes wrong, if they act <clears throat> like other people have acted many times in the recent past, I, I empathize with them completely. I've always supported the police, and I always will, as long as they're doing what's right. How, and another thing regarding how they got into the Capitol, yeah, anywhere from 20 to 50 people they show, roundabout. How did they get in? I'm going to show you these pictures I have of the entrances, especially the front and the one, there's two in the back. I wasn't at the second one, but that one was packed with people too. These entrances were packed with people. Packed from right outside the door all the way, as far as you could see. My camera couldn't even capture how many people were lined up. How did only a few of them get in? If they weren't let in, all of them didn't go through a window. I've seen videos of barricades being moved. What? Why? Why? The videos I'm showing that we saw inside don't make sense. And it doesn't make sense as to how it could happen. Remember I told you in the beginning about the porta potty situation? I'd hate to make the comparison here. I'm not comparing porta potties to police officers and security personnel, but 
there was not enough of anything. The mayor of D.C., Bowser from Shannon on, Arthur finds right. Bowser, whatever her name is, Muriel Bowser. <clears throat> she made a statement to claim that there's approximately four to five thousand. Four or five thousand people that were going to show up. There's either two things, one of two things happened. Okay? Either she and the information, where she gets her information from, are that blind? Or it was purposely done. There was purposely not enough people there, security-wise. There was purposely porta potties set up right across from the entrance just to create angst. Just to create too many people in one spot banging into each other constantly. It's the only reason. It's the only thing I can think of to why these things were done. And then if you add in how they got in and all of that. And one more thing about the wonderful Bowser. Excuse me. The media, what they've been saying. The politicians, what they've been saying. Remember something that the Democrats have been running on? And the president warned us about the making D.C. and Puerto Rico a state. On Thursday morning, early afternoon, I woke up and I was watching the news. And I saw somebody ask her, Bowser, Mayor Bowser, the question. What would you, if you were a governor, what could you have done? She said, if I was the governor, I could have called in the National Guard. I could have done this. I could have done that. If nobody got into the Capitol, could that question have been asked? Think about it. Does it make sense to you? Do you really believe that the mayor of D.C., and the security apparatus that is in D.C. really only thought there was going to be four or 5,000 people there? Doesn't make sense to me. And I hope it doesn't make sense to most people. Because you should question things. Especially the way our media is. You have to. Um, before I go, I want to talk about the biggest thing that we should be thinking about right now that's the cause and effect there was a reason why there were between a million and two million people in Washington D.C. on Wednesday and it's a laundry list of reasons it's not just the election it's not just what our politicians accept it's about how our politicians don't represent us We've been misrepresented for decades. Decade. I was telling somebody the other day that I've never known, or my family, I should mean, I've never known a time in my life where my family or the adults I've known have not had a mistrust or complete disgust with Congress, with the federal government, with other politicians, whether it be local, state. That's a problem. That's a huge problem. Something has to be done. I'm going to run for Congress. People think I'm kidding. I'm going to do it. Am I going to win? The machine is strong. <laughs> and I'm just me. Rick Walker. But what can me, Rick Walker, do? I can keep helping out politically like I do. I can keep trying to tell the story but I also believe that we should be represented in Congress state Congress state government, local government federal government we need to be represented and we haven't been for a long time other countries have been the Chinese communists not only have they been represented 
But they are now in our education system. Almost all of our government agencies. And if you look up what goes on in communist China, that should scare every single person that watches this video. Every single person that knows that's what they do, it should scare the hell out of you. And you shouldn't accept it. Um, I just wanted to show you one thing before I left. It's a clip from a video that I took on Tuesday. I called it. Remember what I said about why? How certain things happen? Well, this is what I said Tuesday. I'm not afraid, but I'm worried. I know how the media works, and I know how socialists work, and I know how communists work. And I know they do things to make people look bad. That's kind of what I'm worried about. I'm not worried about Antifa and all the... <laughs> yeah, really? You're going to come into 2 million Trump supporters? And no, that's not going to happen. I knew there was going to be a lot I of people. How did Bowser not know? A false flag. I am worried about that. Worried, not like, oh, I'm scared. I'm not going to go, no. But if anything happens, remember I said this. Remember I said it. Anyway, I'm tired. Sorry about the end of this video. Kind of zoning out. Um, please pray. That's all we can do at this point. For our country. For the people that are going to be there Wednesday. For the people that are going on Wednesday. With motives that aren't pure. That aren't peaceful. Pray for them. Pray for everybody in this country. And I'll see you, I'll make a video on Thursday. Friday. You'll probably see me live <laughs> on Wednesday, but I'll make another one on Thursday going over everything I saw. It's funny because this is the same thing I did after the first Trump rally I went to when I decided to vote for him. <laughs> That's, now that I just thought about that, it's kind of weird. But I'll see you guys. I'm full of crap, though. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just some radical Trump supporter, conservative, that doesn't care about America. Doesn't care about anybody except for his president. We have to make a decision. A lot of people in this country have to make a decision. What they're willing to accept. You gonna accept them calling me and my friends terrorists? You gonna accept them constantly, one time after another, after another, making us into the evil people? You gonna accept a government by the people, for the people, not representing the people? I'm not. I'm going to do what I can do. And I hope you do too. God bless you and God bless America. And pray for it. Pray for us.